Thank you very much, James, for this mind-blowing talk. <laughs> very exciting. Thank you. So it's one, two, and three. <coughs> yeah. So I have a question. It's very likely that most of the living organisms cannot be arranged in a tree. I was thinking about bacteria that are mo mosaics. So how, how would you handle that in your vision of the tree of life? Yes, that's a great point. In fact, we were discussing this at the dinner yesterday, some of us. Uh, so there is, of course, an ongoing issue with the tree of life that, you know, we know, in fact, for a fact, that there are cross links, and so mathematically it's not a tree. But I think that it's still largely like a tree, so the cross links are the exception rather than the rule. And even in the case of the bacteria, there's a big chunk of the core genome, which I understand is not thought to, to have this horizontal gene transfer that causes this complex net to happen. So if you look at the core genome of the bacteria, then you can have a nice tree. But the other answer I want to give to this is that I think that with this zooming visualisation uh, using fractals, with further research, it could be possible to actually visualise some crosslinks. And the way you may do that would be to exploit the fact you have this freedom to rearrange everything so that parts that are in the, in the main tree shape that need to be crosslinked end up close to each other in space and then you can just draw them over the top in a different colour using a path that doesn't interfere too much with the other information. <laughs> it's easy, but I do think it's likely that, that it's possible if we need to do that. But the degree to which it's a complex mess rather than a tree is a point for debate. I personally think it's larger like a tree with some crosslinks. Yeah. It was about the, yeah, the bacteria and the fact that it may be a network, but uh, actually, uh, if, if you have very different strengths, it may be complicated to, to make all the, all the different things, but... <coughs> I think it, it may be complicated, but until I see the data and start thinking about it. To be honest, the cross links, although it's important, is actually something more for the distant future. Another way of doing it, because it gets really complicated, is that because you have an infinite space in this, you could just have a tiny little dot that you zoom in onto and it says, well actually this is cross-linked to this part, and it just copies the information about the area that it's cross-linked to. So, so the, the, both sides of the cross-link appear where they, hang on, I'm explaining this badly. So let's say that you have, um, one thing here and one thing a long way away and they need to cross link. What you do is you actually have a small minute copy of all of this area that you can zoom in onto inside a tiny spot over here where the cross link happens. And you have a, 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 a tiny minute version of all this stuff here which you can zoom into inside a tiny spot over there. Together with a little button that would sort of zap you across to where it actually is or something along those lines. So the idea of an alias. Uh, if you like, that the same information is put there multiple times. So in fact, if you wanted to visualise, for example, that all of the links between different friends on the social network using, <coughs> use, using this method, there's a problem because uh, you find that many of your friends are friends with each other, but you could have that you zoom into your friend and then within them you see you again, right, but just smaller. And that doesn't matter because you, don't, you can be as wasteful as you like of space in the digital world once you don't need to print it anymore, once you're zooming in on it. So uh, I have sort of a reverse question. So could you get the empirical fractal dimension of all the leaves subtended from a tree at a given section? Could you just report that as well? You could potentially, but I think there's a danger because uh, you, this is a fractal visualization of a tree. And if you give me a tree that isn't fractal, it will be visualised still in a fractal way because it's a natural way to visualise a really big tree. So if you were to do the, the mathematical tests that you could conduct on an image like this to see whether or not it's fractal, it would be fractal. So to know whether or not the tree itself is fractal is something that I've been thinking about that I'd like to speak to people about because to me that seems a bit challenging because the tree doesn't have an, a single accepted mapping into two or three yeah. dimensions and it never will have. So how can you decide whether or not something's fractal when it's already a strange mathematical object? But pattern? given that you make a fractal projection, I was just wondering if you could report on the empirical fractal estimates because then you could possibly gain more insight into speciation under this fractal projection. Yes. Because different lineages may have different estimates of the fractal dimension. 
Right, yeah, you could potentially do that. It, it's possible. Uh, it's only worth trying. My instinct would be that, it, that it, it's a sort of quite circular because of the fact that you are forcing it to be fractal, it will always be fractal. Um, but you're right that the dimension might be different, depend, especially with the, the view on the, uh, these views here, where the actual shape of it in, influences, is influenced by the data itself. Thank you very much for this uh, excellent presentation and for this absolutely wonderful tool, which I'm sure we all use uh, very soon. I was wondering, in terms of thinking of um, <coughs> come next and, and the type of data I really have difficulty to wrap my head around is when these integrations face. So it's this and Google Maps at the same time. It's a bit difficult because it has some of those little leads are everywhere and some of those big branches are in just a few places. Mm. Can you think what would be the integration between this stream and space? Yes, I have thought about this, and it's a really great point because it actually, as we discovered from this workshop, there's just such a huge crosslink between geography and phylogeny. And in fact, a, a view of all life on Earth, you could argue that it should be a map, you could argue that it should be a tree, and in fact it should probably be both things. So what I would envisage is that you have a tree, but on every interior node you have a map. And there are options within that map to, to see the ranges of the species and to see the diversities. And if all the information were in there, all of that stuff would be done automatically. But at the same time, there could also be a tab at the top to change from a primarily a tree view into a map view. And then from the map, you could sort of right-click anywhere or draw a shape in the map and say, show me the tree of the things which ranges overlap this area that I've just shown. And then you can get a prunes tree back. That's what I envisage. Of course, that's tons of work, but that's what I imagine to answer answer that point in the future. Yeah. Okay, so I think you, you and then you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. If you the ones online and look at uh, what I could just uh, import a tree, yes. I could, but then I can help zoom in. Uh, so ah, yes, yes. So maybe uh, you can say something about that, but also more in general, is that of course people will you know, try to do stuff with it that you might not have thought of, or if you have actually thought of it, they haven't implemented it yet. Maybe you can give us the top five things that you're actually going to do next. Okay. Um, okay, so first of all, to answer your question about zooming in, when I first put this online five days ago, I got loads of emails from people saying they couldn't zoom in, especially people with iPads, because I use the zoom wheel to zoom in, and well, this isn't the software, but you use the zoom wheel. And so to answer that, I have now put little icons on the, uh, on the top with a plus and a minus that you can click on to zoom in and out, which aren't there on that version of power because I didn't update the load your own data version to the latest engine yet. <laughs> but that's, that's because I just did it in a rush because people were mainly looking, people were not mainly viewing their own data, they were mainly just exploring the manual tree because there are a lot of members of the public going on there. So, so it's a case of firefighting the, the biggest uses first. So the five things that I'm going to do next is I am going to feed the amphibian data into this because there's a tree right now and the bird data as soon as that becomes available because I think it's important to keep expanding it and providing people with more information and also because it's a shame that those data sets that are so brilliant don't you know, get to be appreciated in this way. Uh, the second thing that I'm going to do, I need to think about this because there's so much, I'm going to improve the load your own data function. And I'm going to improve it so that you can put your own metadata in or so that there's some kind of language that you can use in the, in the node labelling so that you can choose colours and things like that to just give the person a bit more programmability to show information that they want in this. And along with that I'm going to uh, enhance the way that people could uh, give them better instructions about embedding it into their websites and into their talks and things. Which at the moment those instructions are, are, are pretty shallow. The third thing is get funding because um, <laughs> I've had to program this on my own and I can't do this much longer on my own. I'm, I need help from people that are going to do programming on this and that's a bit of a challenge because it's not a normal kind of science. And I think uh, the fourth thing is that I want to get displays of this, interactive displays, into museums and into uh, zoos and aquariums, botanical gardens, places where, where members of the public would come in and they want to see the information that's there and they could sort of zoom in on something and, and see, well actually we've got a specimen of this in that room and then it, it helps them guide around the museum as well. Um, oh and also, the fifth thing, you have to buy an app for iPads and, 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 and mobile devices uh, because 
that a lot of people seem to be asking for that too. And it, 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 apparently it's not too hard, although I'm skeptical, I think it might be hard, but we'll see. Yeah. I'm sure we can keep you, we can keep you busy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I think this is great. I think this is perhaps like very close to what Rod Page wanted to see, and they call it the Google Map for the real life. Uh, but there is an important difference. Uh, the map is not so contentious, except perhaps for parts of areas between Russia, Japan, and China. But the city is highly contentious in which, for many places, you have as many opinions of the right phylogeny as there are taxonomists like walking on that plane. So, how do you handle that? Because you have to have some kind of central authority to monitor or put all the alternatives that people want to have. Have you thought about this? Uh, yes, I've thought about that too. So, the first answer, which is somewhat lame, is I'm the messenger, don't shoot the messenger, I'm not defending the tree, <laughs> I'm just saying, someone's built a tree, it might be just utter rubbish, but you can at least see, see it. <laughs> In fact, this happened at the evolution conference where someone, someone said, oh, we've got this massive tree, let's load it in. They loaded it in, people around were exploring it, and they were saying, this loads in the wrong place, that can't be there. And they were arguing over it. In Maine, because they actually now had a way to see it properly in a way that they couldn't just as a circle on a poster. <laughs> the second point is that because all of this happens automatically when you put your data in, there's, I don't have to redo a lot of work to visualise a new tree. Grandpa, in fact, as you know, just did his in the few seconds you know, while, while I was giving the talk. So um, that indicates that, that when a new tree comes along, there may be some complicated mechanism to keep it automatically updated and stuff like that, but at least if there is an update, it's not a big deal to just replace the data file. And it's also not a big deal for scientists to have a menu of all different trees. Although for the members of the public, to be fair, we'll just want to see one consensus tree of all life, and then that, as, that, as the scientific consensus view becomes more accurate over the next 10 years or so, that will have to be updated. So there may be arguments over that, but yeah. I have a quick question and then you will. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that you presented four challenges, and the fifth challenge I would say is the uncertainty. You yes. know that people, no more people just want to see one black like, one tree. Yes. Uh, but I think that we also giving a false impression because a lot of people are not going to understand um, certain, uh, support values. Mm. How are we doing with that? Uh, can polytomians are just going to show support values for the, for the nodes? Right, well of course you can show support values for, for the nodes, but you can show any information you want. I would, another thing I'd like to do is enable polytonies to be rendered actually as multiple branches coming off of the same node. Whereas at the moment, the way the polytonies are shown is, if I just go back to the software very quickly, and this is a function that I didn't show you, uh, I knew that I had to do something about polytonies, you see, and it was quite hard to adapt the, the, equa the equations to, to do it, although, as I say, I think it's possible. So, explore the mammal tree. Under this more options bar, there's a show polytonies. And if we zoom into the rodents, which is full of polytonies, you can see these little circles here indicate the polytonies. And you can indicate them in a number of different ways, just with a blank. So, that's, there are no linkages now that are uncertain. It's just a sort of dust, which just shows how, how much polytony there is in this, this mammal tree, particularly the rodents. Um, but you can also turn that off. So that's the, the polytomies. Uncertainties. There's a really nice piece of software already out called Dentistry, uh, which plots a lot of trees over the top of each other so that you can see uh, the, the uncertainty in a very visual way. It'd be quite nice to take some inspiration from that into this, but that's something that I suspect would be in a higher level of complexity than just giving a person the ability to display uncertainties on the nose and to display true polytomies, which is doable in a shorter time scale. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you were asked about geography. Maybe I, I missed something very basic, but how do you represent timing there? Like species that are extinct and species that are extinct, and when? I, I got that you do represent, I mean, we get the information that it's yes. extinct, including Vanguard and so on. But Okay, so in these current views, I have concentrated on showing a topology and balance. The time scales are actually not indicated in branch lengths, as perhaps some people say they should be. They're indicated by zooming in to see the actual timing or by the animation. Now, I do think that there's nothing that, as far as just the idea of, a, of an eye figure is concerned, that you could create other formulas where the branch lengths would indicate evolutionary difference. But that they would look quite different to this, but they would still have the same 
kind of properties of being able to put information anywhere and being able to zoom in on them. So I think looking forward, there will be yet more different views that, that accentuate the timings in a better way. Um, 
Okay. So that was okay. Nice. So thank you very much, James.